Um, I've got a background in microbiology. Um, I, for 25 years I worked and lived in between Newmarket and Lambourne. Um, we analysed plant compounds then from the very early days working with um, the Birmingham Medical School. At that time it was, it was seen um, as very different to be working in human medicine as well as horses. But um, pain is the area that mostly interested me and in how plants interact with the body to relieve pain. Um, because I was working in horse racing, we were looking at plant compounds that would um, help horses rehabilitate, I guess, and would also keep their performance levels high. Um, a lot of horse, race horses are sick when they run, sadly. Around 70-80% have some kind of chronic illness when they're running. Um, and uh, the plants help the immune system and it was really that angle that I went into um, with Birmingham University more than anything um, was looking at plants that would help the immune system um, and maintain the horse on the road really. How is it possible that you have lemonitis prone Welsh ponies out on pasture 24-7? Well we came here from Newmarket um, which is full of uh, high sugar grass, um, manicured paddocks, um, thoroughbreds that eat mostly grass and never get laminitis. And um, we had Welsh mountain ponies. My children have always shown ponies, I've always ridden ponies. Um, I think ponies are just part of life really, so we wouldn't go very far without a few and the old racehorse. Um, and we came here really because um, We'd, I'd been working with race in horse racing for 25 years and kind of wanted a change really. So I came here with the Welsh ponies and suddenly found that the ones that were laminitis prone in Newmarket on these, um, even when they were in an area, uh, a small area of grazing, you could turn them out onto 25 acres of heathland um, and they wouldn't get laminitis and it was such a marked difference. I have one young mare that was two years old in Newmarket and she was on the edge of laminitis continually. It was very, very stressful actually, quite scary because there's nothing you can do. There was no grass in the paddock, um, it was a post and rail fence, there was no hedge to speak of, there was bare grass, um, absolutely nothing they could eat and nothing I could give her to eat because she was pottery, too fat, her adipocytes or, or her crest, crusty neck was very hard. It was all um, quite on the edge stuff. So we put her into the trailer and brought her to our new home in Wales, um, turned them straight out uh, just for the pure reason that we hadn't got any fences particularly to speak of and all the stone walls had been knocked down. We had to renovate everywhere. And not only did she thrive, but she never had a bout of laminitis. Um, she never had had laminitis, we were always very careful with her, but she was never on the edge of laminitis at all. Uh, she didn't get a crusty neck, she didn't get adipocytes around her tail. Um, she was a completely different mare. And it was a, a chance meeting with our local university that then made us realise that um, plants contain a lot of chemicals that interact with the body. Um, they've got signalling hormones, they are in fact cytokines, that benefit health. And there's no getting away from it that plants are very potent, um, contain potent chemicals that will help the horse to digest sugar. Um, and it became then a mission really over the last seven years of uh, following the horses around the hill picking up what they ate, taking it to the university, having it analysed, looking at the chemicals they contained, looking at the amounts that um, the horses would eat, and then really extracting those chemicals and trying to put something together that people could use to benefit their own situation, which if it was like my own in the beginning, where I was in an area where nothing grew but too, grass that was too high in sugar. Um, and to, to that end, we've actually been very successful. We've done three clinical trials um, using horses um, that ha only have access to high sugar grass um, that may be being given bagged feed. And we've put um, our compound into a, an extra feed supplement, given that alongside a normal diet. And we've actually shown that um, the horses lost centimetres 
rather than losing a lot of weight, uh, uh, we, we do know why that's happening. Um, it is actually revolves around the AKT pathway. So the chemicals in the plant are interacting with the body in a way to increase protein synthesis. And um, they also do shrink the size of the adipocytes, which um, are the fat deposits in the neck, in the cresty neck. Um, just before a lamellitis attack, you'll notice that they become hard and swollen. Um, and with this particular compound that's come out of the chenopodium, um, the adipocytes become softer and they're absorbed by the body. So I think what the problem is, is that you've got a sluggish metabolism. If you had your um, fat horse, so let's say, um, with fat pads, but you were doing lots of work, the chances are that those fat pads would become less through the work. So you're kind of increasing the metabolism or the rate of metabolism. And I believe that's probably what's happening um, with the ectosterones. Um, we do, we will be doing more work on the exact mechanism, but at the moment we wanted to prove that something was happening and that's our starting point. So in another five years, we'll know the exact pathway. We've done one in a livery yard, um, we've done two, um, one at a veterinary practice and one um, at a yard where we could separate 12 horses and control what they ate. And every single one of them, uh, some were on exercise, some were on no exercise, and they were all, I would say, apart from one big Frisian horse, they all had native pony in them, um, and they all lost inches and uh, or lost centimetres but and looked more muscular I guess that's the way to say it it's to do with how many nutrients the bacteria take out of the gut and they haven't got a way of measuring that they've only got knowledge about what bacteria the gut contains okay. so there are certain types of gut bacteria and they know that if you've got a higher percentage of a certain type of gut bacteria then you're going to be thinner and I think what they've done is looked at people, looked at animals. Um, so we've done it in dogs as well. And they've found that fat dogs have a different sort of bacteria. So what they're trying to see then is once they feed this compound through, do the bacteria change from being the ones that are associated with obesity into bacteria that are associated with leanness? And I think it was just that clear cut passage um, and they did find that that was so. The bacteria did favour the, the lean. They did, they did change, the populations changed into ones that favoured leanness. That's what they do. The plants contain chemicals that interact with your body in that way, and the bacteria. It's, it's all one system. I think that's what we don't appreciate, is that um, plants are designed to interact with your body, definitely. So it's trying to pick foods that would um, promote uh, the gut bacteria that would um, just support leanness. Um, and I think that the more variety, the wider, I think what they're looking for is a much more complex variety of gut bacteria. But the other problem with horses is that if they're uh, resistant to um, antibiotics, you will get some bacteria remaining in the gut, such as E. coli. So that, again, to me, is why you need lots of different uh, plants to eat that will help you to have different sorts of bacteria rather than the ones that are bad for you. Um, I guess that's why we eat anti um, probiotics and prebiotics. Um, but again, they're, they're mostly plant-based compounds, aren't they? So, you know, there is a reason and a use for them. Our idea wasn't originally that they should lose weight, it really wasn't. We um, didn't go into it to have a thin pony. We went into this, this kind of area because we knew there was something happening in the, the plants and happening in the compounds that were changing our horses and making them take a step away from disease, which is really what we wanted. That was what we were interested in. Um, and if you can have a, a fat pony with a, a good insulin levels, um, well, fine, whatever, you know, but you've really, to me, being overweight without having access to this sort of food, I think that you are running into a, um, a disease risk, certainly, um, and a link to laminitis. Um, 
but it is as much about what we feed them and how the horse is able to interact with that food that keeps them in the healthy zone. It is like a zone. You've kind of got a green zone and then you go into an amber zone and then you go woof straight into red. And, um, you know, what our job is to keep them in the green to amber if they're showing. We have a lot of showing people ring up for advice and we never actually say you go away and lose weight. We change the diet so that they can understand why being um, in a shown condition without the buffer of this kind of material is, is a bad thing really. And that's, that's more important to us actually than, than losing weight probably.